they say that nothing is perfect. However, back in April of this year, I got to ride Fly, which is just incredible. It's new next generation Vekoma flying coaster and it's flawless. There is nothing wrong with it. And today I'm going to go into detail into why I think that Fly is the perfect roller coaster and why I don't think anything could ever beat it. To start off with, Vekoma just nailed the coaster itself. The whole way of boiling it, the transition from sitting down to flying, everything, the launches, you get airtime on a flying coaster. How the hell? It's, it's so good. Another thing is that this coaster is for everyone. It doesn't really matter who you are. You might not like flying coasters. However, I guarantee that you will love this coaster. It doesn't feel like a flying coaster, like a B&M flying coaster, sorry. It's got its own sort of charm to it. I don't, that doesn't make sense. But yeah, it's not got the most incredible forces on it. it it's not to the point where you're going to grey out, but it's also not forceless. It does pull some Gs, especially in the second half, which I'll get on in a minute. But yeah, the speaking of the second half though, the second launch, it's such a weird feeling being propelled upwards on a flying coaster and then getting airtime at the top. What? However, I don't think the coaster is itself without the theming. How the hell Fantasyland designed both a coaster and this area it just doesn't make sense the way they built it i don't get like the coaster goes in between buildings it goes underground it goes over pathways yet they've still managed to add this insane level of detail all the buildings the theming it makes no sense the whole rookbra experience just it's incredible. The first time I walked into the area, I was just blown away. I, I did a video before on it where I reviewed Phantasyland as a whole and I put a clip on of me walking into Rookborough and I'll do the same here. Here's the clip. Oh my God. Like, I'd seen videos of the land before, and videos and pictures just don't do it justice. It's so much bigger and grand um, in real life, and you feel like you've been transported into the 1800s. It's the overall package, I think, which makes Fly perfect. But something else which is also often overlooked is the soundtrack. Done by I'm a score of Germany, the whole soundtrack is just magical. And that's the best way I can describe it, really. There isn't one part of the Rookborough experience where you don't hear any sort of audio. Even listening to the soundtrack now, it just takes you back to Fantasyland and walking into that area and queuing for the coaster. You can imagine yourself in that area and it, it's just... It's so good. One thing, however, which also is overlooked on most coasters is the station, I, I, which I can't show you, but it is one of the best stations I've ever been in. They don't allow videos in there because you have to go for like a, a locker, sort of airport security style thing. It's definitely one of the best stations I've ever stepped in. And I think the only station which can ever beat it is Black Mamba, which is in the same park. But yeah, the whole station is sort of styled like an old train station. It's got like engines, it's full brickwork around everywhere. It's got mist effects, like moving dials on like little... It's so good. And look... The thing that catches your eye, however, in the station is watching the train roll in from this wall to your right and it's right in front of you and you think, oh god, I'm about to ride what is probably the best coaster ever built. And knowing you're about to board that, it's... I, I can't describe it. And then the air gates open up and you step on to your carriage. you then dispatched sideways, which is... The first time you do it, it's a very weird feeling, however you get used to it the more you ride it. And yeah, you go into like this dark ride scene, moving upwards. And I, d I didn't watch any spoilers for the ride because I didn't want to spoil it. But yeah, I, d I didn't look at any sort of off-ride POVs because I didn't want to, you know, know what was going to happen. I didn't want to know what to expect. So yeah, I went in completely blind and it, it just blew me away, this whole sort of dark ride scene. You then rotate into the flying position right at the top of this sort of, it's not really a lift, but like a, a diagonal bit of track. And yeah, you rotate into the flying position, which is it's done so smoothly and flawlessly. You can feel yourself turning, but it's not uncomfortable. And I'd, if it was a B&M, and I, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, a Vekoma is better than a B&M. Way better than a B&M. I, I, <coughs> I messed my words up there, but it's so good. After transitioning into flying down, Fly, flying down. After transitioning into laying down, uh, you then go into the launch, which it's not 
an intense launch and it's definitely not a sort of i mean taron in the same park has the best launch maybe the best launch. red force is pretty good so yeah you roll into the first launch which isn't that intense uh but considering you are flying it's done pretty well after flying around the whole land for a fair amount of time you then dive down into the second launch which I, I, it's a feeling you can't describe. You are accelerating quickly and then you, you sort of go up on a, a, an incline and at the top you get airtime while being horizontal. Ow. After this airtime hill though, you're then sent into what is probably the most intense part of the ride and it's like a, a downwards helix down and a, an overbank over the top of uh, like the Aries restaurant. Don't ask me what it's called, it's something in German. So after that you sort of meander around a little bit go for a few buildings, uh, a few theming elements, and then you reach the brakes, which are like, you go down and there's sort of like lights on the side of um, the track, and you see them light up with the train going, it's, it's very cool. Not that it really does anything, but the whole area has things which just don't need to be there, but they are, and it adds to it, and that is, that is why I think this ride is so good. And yeah, it's in the brakes where you, you actually sort of stop and think, what the hell has just happened? And I knew instantly it was somewhere in my top three. So yeah, after a few rides, I think it's stuck at the number three mark. However, thinking about it now, out of any coaster on earth, it's probably the one that I miss riding the most. And if I could, I would be riding it right now, I think. That's why I think it's just gone up above its partner, Taron, which was number two. I can't say number one. I don't. It's not quite there because the the ride experience for number one, as in the ride itself, is great. But you'll see that coming soon because new top ten video dropping in seven years. No, my upload schedule.